Now, this is the, the full water cycle. What we've got happening is evaporation coming, uh, the forming clouds over the land, rain coming down, so precipitation. Some of this runs off, some of it accumulates into the groundwater table. Now, if you take a look at the next one, and I'm going to play this one back and forth a couple of times. What's the main difference you see between these two pictures? Forest. That's right. No forest. We've got to take into account the effect of human activity on the planet. What happens through the deforestation is that we've actually significantly altered the hydrological <coughs> cycle. Through deforestation, the ground gets saturated quicker and the water cannot sink and, and properly absorb into the uh, into groundwater t to reach the groundwater table. We get a much larger proportion of it running off the land. That increases erosion and flooding and just makes the problem cumulatively, cumulatively worse. What happens is that we do get more rapid re-evaporation and that, that can cause more cataclysmic weather events. And if this, bear this picture in mind, or well the next one, and the, the two fit in together rather nicely if you look at New Zealand. And it actually describes the picture in New Zealand to some extent. Now we may argue um, some differences in terms of what caused deforestation, especially if you, if we, you know, this is your classic, I guess, South Island scenario, where you've got your West Coast ranges caused by the uplift of the tectonic plates, and your plains and to to the to the coast. So. In addition to that, however, we're taking an awful lot out of those aquifers. Not only are they getting less and less into them, but we're actually tapping into these aquifers and extracting more water than is really accumulating. Um, <coughs> this is a graph I threw together just to give us a sense of perspective once again. And the First, the blue, that's rainfall in total amount. So just, just to compare some countries that we may have a relation to, South Africa, relatively sim similar amounts to New Zealand. But it's, if you bear, look at that with the green line, the green line is the land mass. So while we get the same similar total volume in South Africa, for example, we are obviously have a considerably smaller land mass, hence they are considerably drier overall. And the USA, you know, large land mass, large amount of rainfall. But what's really interesting is the light blue, the total renewable fresh water per capita. So that's how much water we've got available per person in the, in the relative country. And there, South Africa's off them, off the chart, essentially, there's nothing there. Countries like the UK, Germany, Japan, all work at similar levels. The USA has a bit more available. Australia even more, due to the relatively low population against the land mass. But we know Australia's got significant water issues. New Zealand, we have loads of water. So, in a way, we're, we're quite spoiled. And I think that is reflected in some of the, the past practices in our relationship to the way we've used water, or failed to use it perhaps in the, in the best practice sense. It speaks for itself. Over the last 50 years, global water withdrawal has quadrupled, while the world population has doubled. Now, 
if we do some basic math here, some basic arithmetic, and look at the exponential function, for that to happen again, it's going to take less than 50 years, and even less. I think this is from one of your slides, isn't it? Uh, tell me if I have got this right. Um, but 50% of the allocated water used in New Zealand is used in the Canterbury Plains. Now, I would have to guess, going from the table below, that the bulk of that is irrigation. And uh, it's not just Canterbury Plains. I mean, we're familiar with water issues in the Waitaki Valley. Um, you know, the energy cradle of New Zealand. And uh, I, I re went through there about three weeks ago, and it's incredible, the amount of irrigation, not through, only there, but also in the Mackenzie country, um, near Omarama. I, I saw the largest rotary uh, water sprinkler system that I've ever seen in my life. And actually, I wish they had a photo of it now. And I, 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 it just staggered me to think how many cubic meters that thing is pumping up per second. Incredible. So households, we're actually the, th the thin end of the wedge, 10%. However, we can start making a difference and there's some good reasons for looking at our own water consumption and ways of reducing it. Going back to the global perspective, over one million people are suffering from a shortage of clean water. No, uh, one billion, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> just, just testing to see if you're all wet. <laughs> My coffee's wearing off. And five million plus die due to this each and every year. So water is actually one of the big global issues. Where are we at in New Zealand? Just again, comparing to some other countries. The USA are the largest gross water users for domestic use. So this is cubic meters per year, per person. So 215 cubic meters for one person. Now I'm not sure that if everybody in America has a swimming pool, um, but you, you start to wonder. France, Egypt, India. So we're com comparable with India. However, um, If you, you know, to what we actually need is less than, as is two litres, a minimum of two litres, and anything over that is actually just adding to quality of life. But the minimum is, uh, is two litres a day for sustaining life. Okay, why have spraying water? Well, I think it has a pretty much. Um, We've, we've actually seen some reasons.